Hello, this is Pete. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a snake game that I created in a console app and uh, just go through. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about what it does, how it functions, then uh, we'll go through, build the code line by line so that you can see what I've done. All right, let's go ahead and show what the game does. So I'm going to hit two to play. Enter. Yes. And now uh, you can see I've got my little snake. He's just a single unit right now because he hasn't eaten any apples. And I have red straw starbursts uh, that are kind of the apples. And so we go ahead and we go. As he moves across, and as I eat apples, you'll be able to see I get, uh, the snake gets longer. He also goes a little bit faster each and every time. In the background, it, whoops. It's keeping track of how many apples I've eaten uh, for a score at the end. There we go. And this will be my last apple, and we'll go ahead and die. And there you can see. So I had five apples. I kept getting a little bit faster, and my final score was uh, 500 points. Snake game. I've got a little bit of an animation uh, there and voice that says the snake game uh, every time someone goes to this uh, page. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started and create a new snake game. All right. Start using uh, Visual Studio 2015. Let me put this inside the window. You guys can see everything. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start new project. Uh, we want a console application. I'm going to call it Snake Game. And for right now, I'm just going to put it there. And we'll go ahead and say okay. Awesome. So we got that. Make this smaller. I'm going to make this so that uh, we can see as much as possible. All right. First thing that uh, I want to do is just kind of outline the different steps that we're going to uh, to go through in this video and subsequent videos to finally build out Snake Game. First thing I want to do is I want to uh, just get uh, the snake to appear on screen. After that, we're going to get the snake to move. Uh, then we're going to build a boundary. I'm going to detect when snake hits boundary. All right. That'll be the end of vid one. Then we're going to uh, place Apple on board. Uh, and this will be done randomly. We'll also detect when apple was moved. I'm sorry, was eaten. And uh, this will also make snake faster. Make snake longer. And we also need to keep track of how many apples were eaten. Okay, that brings us to the end of video two. So, in bid two. Next things we're going to do is things to polish up the game. 
such as you need to build welcome screen. Welcome screen. We need to give player option to read directions. Directions. We need to show the score and give player option to restart or replay probably better replay the game okay with that we will go ahead and get started uh, let's go ahead and start with hey let's even get the snake to show up on the screen uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we need to define an X and a Y coordinate and we're going to go ahead and give it an initial value 35 give that an initial value of 20 and now we go ahead and actually paint that to the screen so console set cursor position x position y position and we'll do uh, make uh, make them show up, make snake show up, foreground color. We're going to equal console color, and we want that to be yellow. And so now console right, and inside of this we want a char. of two, and that's the smiley face. So let's give this a go. All right, we have our smiley face. Okay, first thing's done. Next thing we need to do is figure out how to make the snake move. Okay, now we need to uh, do our next step. I had uh, make snake move. I'm going to go ahead and do a boundary so that we can give him area to work in first, and then we'll make him move. So with the boundary, we're going to build wall. We're just going to call a method to build the wall. We're going to go ahead and build a wall and just generate a method to build that wall. Okay, we'll do that right here. So first we're going to do a for loop. I and the length we want, uh, so we got to do an X and a Y. Uh, so this will be the Y, it's going to be 41. We're going to build the wall. We've got to find X and Y coordinates. Uh, we want this to be from one to 40. Inside of there, we're going to do a console dot foreground color. Let's do console dot foreground color equals console color, and we want to be white. And then console dot set cursor position. And we're going to set that at one comma I, so as it iterates through the eyes from one to 41. And console, console dot right, there we are. And we're just going to write a pound sign. Then console, got set cursor position and again console dot right and again we want the outside okay let's 
see what that gives us. Okay, let's see what that gives us. All right, as you can see, what we've done is we've defined the left bounds and the right bounds of the wall. So, in this case, X is 1, and it's going from 1 to 40. In this case, X is 70, and it's going from 1 to 40. And that's that part of it. We're going to do just the opposite for this other side. And we want to go, oops, I. And now we want to do this one out to 71. <clears throat> And then uh, pretty much exact same stuff. So I'm just going to steal this. And the eyes are going to be on the inside this time. And this is going to be a one. I or inside or exposition. This one we want to be 40. All right. Let's look at this. Now we have, whoops, not quite the box that we want. And the reason is because I started off at zero here. So we're going to start off at one. Now to give us the box that we want. Now we've got a nice square. All right. That gets us started. So now we've we've uh, made it, made the snake appear. We have built a wall. Now we're going to make the snake move. All right, so let's make the snake move. So we want to do this with a do. Oops, do. And we're going to go ahead and define a, a variable up top, but essentially we want to keep going through this uh, while game is, is still in play. So we're going to go ahead and say, is game on? And what we need to do though, is we need to come up here at the top uh, right underneath here, we're going to define a bool. Is game on? And we want that to be true to start with. So now it will go ahead and keep looping until something happens and we decide that game on is no longer true. In this case, that being the snake hits the wall. But first we just need to, uh, to make the snake move. We're going to go ahead and do this uh, with a switch statement, but we need something for it to switch on. So we're going to go console, console key, command, equals console, console dot read key dot key. Okay. So now we can switch on command. All right. So after command, all I did was uh, hit uh, enter. And because system knows that console read key dot key has all these options, gave us a ton of things that we can work with. All I want to use is the arrow keys. And so what we're going to do is let me find there's the first arrow key so i want to just delete all these other options and down there is all the other different keys that someone could uh, press we're just getting rid of them all there we go all right I'm even going to take the default out. Okay, so for each of these, so for left, I'm going to do an up arrow, down, and a right. Whoops, I didn't get rid of that. So for the left arrow, Console dot set cursor position. Oops. Position. Position Y position. Console. 
dodge right. And we're going to, essentially what we're doing before we write is we need to erase the current head of the snake. So that's what this is doing. And now I'm going to update that X position because we went left and left is going to be negative, so minus minus, and that gives it to us. And I'm going to go ahead and separate these just a line from each of the breaks. But we're going to keep that pattern up and I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. So for the going right, the only difference instead of uh, left or minus minus, we're going to do plus plus. And now for the up arrow, and instead of it being the Y position, we're going to go, instead of being the X position, we're going to move the, um, the Y position. And then finally, and when we go down, that is YY is added to for the going down. All right. So after we, now we have erased the current head position, We've updated the coordinates. What we need to do is go ahead and just rewrite this position. Later, we will uh, actually have a longer method for writing the entire snake. But for right now, this will go ahead and, and do it for us. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. But one of the things that we're going to see is that, wow, it's going way too fast and it just blurs off the screen. All right, he's not doing anything. Now I press and he just flies off the screen. So we have got to slow the game down. We're going to go ahead and detect or slow the game down and the same little area we're detecting um, if the snake hits the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sub, um, slow game down. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that. One of the things that we need to do is we need to have a variable that, uh, oops, that determines or that captures is the wall hit. So let's go up top on another bool. Bool is wall hit. I'm going to start this off as false. All right. So, is wall hit? And that's going to equal uh, another method. Did snake hit wall? And to know that, we need an X position and we need a Y position. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this method. This method is pretty easy. If x position equals 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 one, or x position equals equals seventy, or y position equals equals one, or y position equals 40. So if any of that is true, we're going to return true, else we're returning false. Okay, so now we have a value, uh, true or false is wall hit. So now that we know whether the wall has been hit, we're gonna do an if uh, is wall hit. Okay, so now we want to know if the wall is hit. If the wall is hit, then is game on. Now it becomes false. We also want to uh, go ahead and message uh, the the player. So we're going to do console dot right. Oh, I'm sorry. Set cursor position need to reset it so that we dictate where the message is going to 
to play. And then what we want to do is so right line the snake. Hit the wall. And you that was not made. So personal we'll just say and died. Okay, so that's what happens. If if we hit the wall. Now we're going to assume that we did not hit the wall. Therefore, we need to look for the next key pad, uh, key stroke. We also need to slow this game down. Where's the end of? Oh, whoops! The other thing that I did not do. Do while. Yes, this all needs to happen inside of my do while. So that's happening inside, and. We want to call this, we want to check all of this X. So this needs to continue to happen. Boom. All right. We want to see if there's been an additional keystroke. So we're going to go if. And the true statement is console.key available. If that's true, then command equals console dot read key dot key and this is we don't need any of this I just did it all in a single line so if if that's true then command gets updated if it's false command does not get updated but every time we need to slow the game down. So we're going to go system dot threading dot thread dot sleep and game speed. And that's a variable we need to go make up top. We can go ahead and make game speed an int right now. Int game speed. And we will start it off at 150. That's just the milliseconds that it is going to sleep. Let me find there I am. Uh it's gonna sleep in between uh looking uh going through the next cycle. So it gets to this point and it sleeps for 150 milliseconds right now, and then it goes to the next step. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. All right, so he's going at a more reasonable pace. And let's see, and I can turn, and then whenever I do hit the wall, it tells me that I hit the wall. Okay, that is the end of part one. Uh, there will be two more parts to finish this out.